Hey guys, welcome back to the Ice Project. Uh, a lot of people have been asking for this one for a long, long time, and great to have one of my old friends in the house. So, roll the intro. Louis Brown, what's up? Hey, my bro, how's things? Yeah, good. Been in a while, eh? Oh, it has, bro. It has been, uh, you know, nearly three years since I've um, bumped into you. Uh, yeah, that's how long it's been. Everyone always asks me, because we're in very similar industries and that now, I'm just like, how's Louis been? And I was like, I don't know. And yeah. then we had that sort of conversation probably about two months ago when COVID hit, had a little hour and a half chat and it was a bit of a giggle, eh? Yeah, bro, it was always, always good to catch up. And, you know, one of those things is, um, you know, we've, we've probably been at every club we've been to together. And um, you know, <laughs> I just, That's the first thing I read. Like, for the last 10 years, like, we're both at the Warriors, both at Penrith, both at Manly. Now we're both doing the same thing now, which is cool. Yeah, there's a few times where I was, you know, you saw me at the ATM at the Warriors and I was a big <laughs> boy and then I signed with Penrith and the next minute the Iceman's here and then Manly Iceman's there so uh, no nah, it's been a good journey bro um, it's good to see you boys doing good things and you know life uh, works very funny we're both in the same industry now and um, it's good to see you guys sitting a level um, and, and doing big things not just with your clothing but also um, you know YKTR Sports yeah crazy thanks bro I appreciate that and first of all fucking very proud of everything you've done I feel like um, it seems like obvious now that you've come into this sort of industry but like I've said in a few posts when I've brought your stuff I've never seen someone that cares about clothes and fashion as much as you do so um, it's credit to Earl's you've got definitely got your own style um, and people really re- resonate with it and we fuck with it too yeah it's cool bro it's, I think you know you know, playing rugby league as you know yourself um, you know as rugby league players we think sometimes we're just put on this earth to play sport and we think that's it um, you know for me um, I knew that I had other skills, but I really struggled to get get that creativity out out of my mind. And um, Earls was something that um, you know I've always loved. Um, not Earls itself, but clothing. Um, and then the name sort of just came normally. And um, yeah, here I am. Mm. So obviously everyone knows you as a football player as well. Fucking 199 NRL games, 15 tests for the Kiwis. From a kid from uh, Christchurch, do you ever think you'll hit those goals? Uh, no, not at all, bro. I, um, you know, it, growing up, um, you know, rugby league was sort of in our family. Uh, I had a cousin who uh, played in the NRL, and you know, as a young Kiwi boy, when you when you got a cousin who um, is probably your fourth cousin, um, he's on TV. <laughs> you kind of, you kind of, he, he, he becomes your hero. And um, who was yeah, that? Um, Brendan Tudor. So he played in the um, for the West Magpies, um, and the Kiwis is known as the baby faced assassin uh, from the Chatham Islands. Um, that's where my family comes from. Uh, but yeah, just grew up loving, loving rugby league, um, grew up around it, um, played rugby as well. Um, obviously, being from Christchurch, it's a very uh, big rugby town. And then, um, yeah, just um, just tried to try to live my dream. You know, a lot of people doubted me, um, as you do as a kid. You know, being from Christchurch, trying to get out of there, it's a bit of a mission. Uh, but I was uh, very lucky enough to have a very strong mother um, who sacrificed a lot for me to do everything I could to be able to live out my dream. And, you know, I finally got to the NRL to play one game was amazing but to play 199 um didn't quite get that one to get the 200 um <laughs> thanks Trent Barrett but um does that hurt you uh no nah, not really I, I think at the time um I, I wasn't in love, love with the game anymore my passion had had moved elsewhere and um you know I've never really been a stats man um I was just you know thankful to be able to play you know one game um to play 199 was pretty cool would have been nice to get the 200 um but you know to play 15 tests for my country that's something that um you know I'll never forget what were you like as a kid um, very, very into rugby league. Uh, love skateboarding, um, hip hop music, basketball. Uh, no, not that I can play basketball. Got no hops at all. You've probably seen a few <laughs> of my shots. Seen the calves. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the calves aren't too big. I've been working on them since the retirement, so I've had about a two centimetre growth over the last few few years. But I was just, you know, I was raised by a single mum. I um, have an older sister. She moved to Australia when she was uh, very young. So I guess I could say I was her only child. Um, you know, but, you know, I didn't really have much of a relationship with my dad. Um, so, you know, I had a lot of father figures in my life, you know, within my family, my grandfather, my pop, who I'm very, very close with, um, and, and my uncles too. So I was very lucky in, in that sense. But just love sport, love sport, um, love rugby, um, love league, obviously. Touch. Touch, love a bit of touch. Yeah, yeah. Collect, like you guys now, collected cards as a kid. Uh, you just all... All rugby league, everything was about sport, and I think you know I grew up in an era, you know, in, in the '90s where, you know, that was you know play play footy outside until the lights, you know, the light, you know, the, mm. the light comes off and uh, goes off at night, and the street lights come on, and you know I'm very thankful to grow up in that. I, you know, I learned a lot, and you know, my mum, she worked very hard. She was a great athlete. You know, she was a good netball player, and then um, I think I seen her uh, work so hard to get. Um, 
me and my sister what we needed. And, um, yeah, I, I think I was a pretty good kid, bro. Yeah. I think I, um, I was prefect at primary school, but I left school in full form. So I'm you not leave too, in full form? Yeah, I'm not too sure if my um, spelling is as bad as Chico's, but it's close <laughs> to it. <laughs> it would be hard to beat them boys, man. They're shocking. <laughs> um, so there's a little um, in-between period where it wasn't always guaranteed that you're going to hit your sort of even debut. Um, so between full form and your debut against the Dragons, what was that sort of like? Because first time I met Louis, he said hello to me, but I didn't know we had signed him and he was – He'd be struggling to get in this office if we. Yeah, <laughs> you're yeah, a big boy. Uh, yeah, hey. he was a big boy. Yeah, to be honest with you, bro, it was like you know, four form and and between four form and my debut, um, a lot of a lot of stuff happened. But I think um, a lot of hard work, and I kind of found myself as a person. You know, I went through a lot of experiences, um, travelled a lot. You know, obviously. You would have played in the NJC as a kid, you know, that New Zealand system they had in the 16s and 18s. That was good, eh? I enjoyed it. It was yeah, dope. Yeah, it was yeah. kind of, you know, you really got to, you know, live that uh, professional, semi professional life. Travel, yeah, travel, travel yeah. And, and you got to play against kids that were in NRL systems already. So you got to test yourself. Um, How'd you guys go? Um, yeah, we, we went all right. Um, <laughs> play Auckland and yeah, just get fun. We went to an under 15s um, national tournament, Hopper. Oh, yeah. And um, rocked up and. Uh, we seen the Auckland team, big shunner. Uh, Manu Vadavai had an afro, and we actually thought it was a premier team. We, <laughs> our coach actually said, oh, it's so nice that the um, the premier team's here watching the under-15s, and it turned out there was the under-15s. So that was my first taste of um, national footy, and I was thank, um, grateful enough to make the under-15s New Zealand team then. So kind of put myself on the map, um, and then didn't really make any um, rep teams between then and uh, then. And um, just kind of slaved away, slaved away, and then finally got an opportunity at the Roosters. Had to go down to Griffith first, um, down um, country New South Wales, and you know proved myself down there because I came over mid year, and then um, got a contract at the Roosters, come up here and play Jersey Flag, and spent three years here in Sydney, and went from. Uh, Were you with um, Hos in that? Yeah, I was with Hos. Yeah, yeah, Hos. Um, the ES, ES Marks days, he likes <laughs> to call it. Yeah. Um, He's had a good little crew, eh? Yeah, we had a good crew. We had a great team. Um, you know, Sean Kenny Dale, Mitchell Pierce. Um, Frank Frank Paul, uh, Michael Lett, um, he's probably one of the best um, Reserve, you know, yeah, yeah, Australian schoolboys, made it three years in a row. Uh, so we had some great players. Jimmy Dimmock was our coach. Had some great times. We were, we were quite lucky back then. So it was the Roosters' first grade, and then the Reserve grade actually went to Newtown, and we were the Jersey Flag team, so we got to play before, before first grade, and we were, all, the, all the Reserve grade players had to wear Newtown gear, and we were the only <laughs> boys that were in Roosters, so we used to walk around yeah. thinking we were Reserve graders. Um, but it was cool. It was a real eye-opener for me. Um, and then I went to the uh, West Tigers. Um, probably didn't care about my nutrition as much. Um, got up to nearly 108 kilos, um, which was quite big for a hooker. What did you weigh now, bro? You're small now. I'm down to 82. Now. Um, so what do you play at? Like 90s? Um, 98. I was, yeah. I was around, so I've lost nearly 16, 17 kilos. Um, Have you lost now. that? Oh, I don't know. A lot of people will come up with different ideas, but um, I think just I've, I've started running a lot, like, um, you know, nearly close to 8 to 10 k's a day. Um, so you wake up in the morning, go for yeah, a run? Yeah, go for a run. I think more, more for myself, it's more uh, for a mental side. It's not really for my physical side. Um, my body's still pretty beat up, but, you know, you, if you start your, your day well, you kind of. Um, you know, put yourself in a good mindset, as you know, in this industry, um, you know, clothing, um, you know, you've got to get those creative juices going, and that certainly helps me. But, yeah, just spent some time here in Sydney, and then I was thankful enough to um, get an opportunity where Ivan Cleary didn't even know what I looked like. Um, he'd seen me on a DVD, and um, <laughs> basically Jeez, gave... He's a show now, AG yeah, now, Yeah, eh, pretty much, bro. And he um, basically um, gave me a minimum contract, and um, as, as you know, I come over to the Warriors, 108 kilos, and, and just worked hard, Um you know, I kind of knew it was my last opportunity. And, um, yeah, the rest is history from there. Yeah, it was a fucking big preseason for you, wasn't it? Yeah, I rocked up pretty early. Um, it was quite a blessing in disguise. I rocked up with a, uh, a broken foot. foot yeah, um, I remember that. And I think if they'd chucked me in straight away, I would have struggled um, with the fitness. But, you know, I was, I was lucky enough I was in rehab to be able to lose all that weight. So by the time I come back to full-time training, I'd lost 10 kilos already and I was really fit. So, mm. And then, you know... You know, yourself, we had and you always ran all right, though, eh? Yeah. Like, even though you're a bit bigger, but you always ran all right. Yeah, had a, like. had a big engine. Um, always was always pretty good at cross country as a kid. And then, um, yeah, just slowly made my way. And then we had those great trips, those Vulcans trips in the Auckland <laughs> yeah, Vulcans. Right, they were the yeah. good days. And, you know, it was me, you, and Dan Dan, and mm. um, Dan O'Reg, and our good mate. And, um, you, know, f- uh, you know, one day um, Ivan just called me in his office and just said, listen, you're going to make your debut. And I think for me it was um, not a relief. Oh, it was a relief kind of thing, you know. It was kind of... Um, Something that I've always wanted to do and to realise that your dream is about to come true is something that um, I, I can't really put into words. But, you know, just to be able to ring my mum and my grandfather, um, you know, brought tears to their eyes, as, as most, you know, um, kids do when they make their debut. And, yeah, the rest is uh, history at the Warriors. And just, 
you know, slowly. Well, it was a good little period there, eh? Like oh. even like I played a couple games of reserve grade, yeah. but everyone got along. It was a mad vibe, eh? Yeah, well, I think in two thousand and nine, bro, was like we, you know, we, we were, got pumped. Yeah, yeah, we were expected to, you know, probably make the final that year. You know, was you know, we were the, one of the favourites going into the, um, you know, the comp that year. But you know, like likes of myself, you, um, we were just sort of happy to be there. Um, I think we. We won like six, seven games. Um, <laughs> absolutely got pumped a few times and yeah. uh, we were still running off with smiles. Um, but I was just a young kid, happy to play uh, one game, two games. And then, you know, before the end of the year, I played 15 and just signed a new contract. And then I, you know, got named in the Kiwis train on squad at the end of that year. And, you know, I started to kind of believe in myself a bit more, got into a big preseason and, um, you know, my second year of the Warriors. Yeah, 2010, 2011, great time around the Warriors. Is it the last time they made the finals and shit? It was, eh? Yeah, so 2010, we went to the um, the, the finals. finals. Um, Knocked uh, out second round. Yeah. Remember that Tigers Roosters game? Fucked us, eh? Yeah, I remember we um, were at home watching that game. Um, and. Um, we Straight need, down in the long room. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we needed we needed uh, the Tigers to win, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah needed the Tigers to yeah. win. And High Inter knocked it on. Oh, knocked it on, and that's to kick the field goal. And then there was a text sent out, "Hey boys, put your jeans on." <laughs> uh, so we put the jeans on, went down to long room, yeah. and then I think Penrith were playing. Ca- Canberra or Canberra were playing Penrith one versus eight because of the old system, mm. and we're like, oh, no, we'll be right for next week, so we'll have a quiet drink, and then sure enough, it turned into Mad Monday. Yeah, crazy. So um, I'll sort of talk about a little bit off topic for football right now. Always been a bit of a styly dude, but moving back to Auckland where you've never lived, it's quite it's, it's got its own style way, you know, around that sort of Ponsonby city area, and you've always been into your fashion. Did that really influence the start of your fashion journey there? Obviously, you would have done a bit in Aussie, come back wearing tight t-shirts and, and billabong. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think this, the whole style thing for me sort of started as a kid. I loved sneakers as a kid. Um, the Presto shoe? The yeah, the Presto shoe was probably my favourite. Um, as a kid, I remember I got the, the silver and red ones, um, the year of the Olympics, 2000, um, over here in Sydney and you know I just fell in love with the shoe fell in love with Jordan um, love old school Converse not not the Chucks but they used to have these like basketball shoes called the Cons mm. and uh, they were my favourites um, but you know classic um, you know single mum um, story you know we couldn't really afford things and you know I kind of just anything I could get my hands on I just wanted to make look cool and um, you know I was just trying to look as cool as I could and I think, you know, that's when my love sort of started. And, you know, obviously as, as my life went on and um, the journeys went on, my styles changed a lot. And, you know, it's just always become a passion of mine. I felt like, you know, it's, it's an opportunity to, to speak without speaking. It's your own, your own voice when you speak, um, when you dress. And, you know, it just, it just, it's your own individuality. And um, that's something that I've really loved. I've copped a lot of stick over <laughs> in the past. Oh, that was my next question. Oh. Like, I used to cop stick over different things, but you used to cop it for your fashion. And at the time, we'll come in through, if we said words like personal brand and like, I used to get paid out for taking photos and shit. And like, yeah. you always got paid out for your fashion because you're probably a little bit ahead of your time. So, yeah. Yeah, but you could copy. You could copy very well. Yeah, I remember I'd rock up to um, you know um, women promos and Ivan Clear would be like, "Mate, what are you doing? We're in a cardigan." <laughs> and um, I'd be like, oh, "Come on, I just, you know, yeah. just give it a break." But you know, you know, like you said, mate, it's kind of one of those things that I loved and we stuck to. You love doing photos. I loved my fashion, and then you know, it's funny enough now we're we're in that position today, which we both love. Yeah. Hey, bro, can we go for a coffee? Pick your brain? Oh, hey. <laughs> Where was this before? <laughs> um, so, what? anything you miss about football? Um, I think I just miss seeing the boys each day. Um, I, I was quite, I was someone that's very to myself. Um, I'm quite a private person, so I've always lived by myself. I've said, I've said this for, before about you. Like, when you, whenever, because we always went to the same teams, whenever we went into a new team, it always took people a while to get to know you. Like, I reckon like six to eight months, but by the time you left, you're always like one of the boys' like favourite people, eh? Like, yeah. Georgie Defoe is like a great example of that, where the boys didn't really know you. Yeah. And now you guys are like tight as fuck. I'll give you a class example about Georgie. Um, me and him did an American trip. Um, we've done it twice together. And, and, and people that know Georgie um, quite closely, he's quite private too, and he doesn't oh. let many people. Yeah. People and <laughs> and um, we were out in LA one night and um, he like turned to me he's like bro you know what when you first come to Manly bro I hated you <laughs> and I was like, oh. but you know I just kind of it was it was a situation I was in with life at the, at that time and and um, you know I, I like to think that I'm a good team player I like to be around um, you know a good team and you know try and you know bring that camaraderie and kind of bring that banter and um, yeah I just kind of um, I, I miss I miss the boys I miss the um, competitive nature. Um, I've always been a competitive person, but I've learned to kind of um, funnel that into you know what I'm doing now. Do you um, what, what's the biggest lessons that you've learned from football that's carried you over into business? Oh, that, that's a great question to be honest. Um, yeah, people ask me that all the time. Um, probably, 
oh, like you just got you just got to go through it. Like I feel like a lot of people talk about things, wanting to do things, um, but I felt like with me. Um, I just wanted to be in control of my own destiny. Um, I felt like rugby league um, had too much of a hold on me. Um, you know, it dictated what I what I did through through that period of my life, that ten years, and I was just ready to have a new lease on life. Um, but what rugby league sort of taught me, what a lot of people don't really lo- know, is like working in um, group scenarios. Like you you learn so much about business playing rugby league, you don't even know about it. Just to be able to interact with different people, learn different skills, um, learn to d- deal with different personalities. You know, we're all very different, um, and you you. you what I learned is about hard work. Um, you know, if you work hard, you get rewarded. Um, you get, you know, put put into teams and you know, in business. If you, if you're willing to work hard and and you're passionate about something, um, you know, you'll go ed- to any length on the earth to make it work. And and I feel like that's something that I've really taken over to Earls. Do you know what the biggest thing that I've learned outside of football that I thought happened? So when I first went into business, you know, in sports, for someone to win, someone else has to lose. Yep. It's so different in business. Eh? Yeah. Where, like fuck, if why KTR wins, Earls wins. Like it's yep. good. Like you know, yep. there's no really like element nah. of competition. Competition. No, there's no competition. But yeah. even though I am still competitive in certain natures, like, but then I'll just go play one on one basketball, and that gets me yep. my little fix. Or yep. like, I'll try and beat our numbers from last year. That gets gets me a little fix but I just want to help everyone at the same time yeah. man. and that's the big difference I reckon and that's the cool thing with me I'm still learning about business um, you know I, I finished school in four form and like I said before I, I really struggled as I grew up I kind of I got not, not an anxiety but I had something in the back of my head like I was like, man, I'm not smart enough to do things. But I've always had a creative side, but I just really, really struggled to get it out. And I, I didn't know how to get it out. And, you know, eventually, as my footy career went on, I, I learned to slowly get that out. And that was, you know, designing and stuff. And, you know, I was just sick of buying expensive clothes. Um, I, I would have spent a bit of bit of money on clothes and sneakers over my life. And I was just like, you know, what? why why can't I do it? Like, mm. why can't I put my own swing on things and do it? And that's why I just jumped into it. Mm. All right, so next phase of your life, Earls. Uh, where did the original idea come from? Um, the original name? Yeah, yeah. Let's, just, let's go right. Like, what was the light bulb moment for you when you go, fuck it, I'm, I'm just going all in? Yeah, I think, um, so, the, so the name, we'll start with the name, the story behind it. Um, like I said before, I grew up with a single mum. Um, knew my dad, his name's uh, Bevan. Um, and French. Yeah, <laughs> Bevan Frenchie. <laughs> um, and, um, yeah, so Bev, he um, was in and out of my life. Um, me and my sister got the same father. And, um, unfortunately, three years ago, he um, took his own life to suicide and, um you know, we, we share the same middle name, Earl. And um, back in the day, I remember he used to go in the skate park and he, he'd, he'd come down and he, he was a bit before his time. He was a super styly dude. He'd rock up with like leather jacket, you know, the tight jeans and chucks back in the back in the 90s when like, you know, you see someone wearing tight jeans and you think, well, what the hell's he up to? <laughs> yeah. And I was embarrassed of him. And, mm. I, and you know, because I was hanging out with my mates and their, their dads were dressed like in like, you know, polos and rug- rugby league tracksuits, and I thought that was cool, you know. Mm. And um, but it's just something that he always had him and had a swag about him. And um, yeah, I lost him three years ago. Um, and I was over in, over in England playing for the Kiwis, and I, I hopped off the field, and my sister rang me, and she said, "Um, you know, Dad's taking his own life, so I had to fly back for the funeral." And what I learned, what I learned back when I went back to the funeral was my dad took his own life, and my uh, grandfather and my great grandfather. So three generations. Did that scare? Uh, to be honest with you, bro, it did. It, mm. did. it really, really scared me. And then another weird thing was, was when I was back at the funeral, my dad had had a boy, um, a son after um, after me and my me and my sister. So my stepbrother, my half brother, and this dude Jake looks like my twin, um, exact twin. Oh, so going back yeah. to the funeral was quite weird to you know to to not see that side of the family for nearly 15, 20 years. Um, and then obviously my dad dying, and then to see someone who looked exactly like me, probably just a worse uh, dressed version. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I went back there, and when I went away, I, it did rattle me. Um, I was coming to the back end of my career, and I knew how much people struggled um, without rugby league when they retired. Um, and then I just realised that un- how unhappy I was with life, and you know I realised that life's way too short to be unhappy. And and you know when your when your dream becomes a job and um, I think it's time to walk away. And, and in my last two years at Manly, um, my, my performances on the field probably showed that. Um, I was ready to, to walk away. I was ready for a change. And um, I was actually meant to go over to Perpignan, um, over to France, to the Super League. But I, I, I turned it down and, and, and took a chance and um, just thought, why can't I live another dream? And that was always to do clothing. Mm, that's weird. Like, obviously, you're a sports head growing up. I was too. Um, always thought I'd move into sort of like the co- – like 
Baz trying to push me towards coaching, Ivan trying to push me towards coaching. And I was just, I was the same as you. I just, I just wanted something else, say, eh? because I felt kind of trapped with the football. Because you can, you can like, you're told what to do, you're told what to wear, you're told where to be, you're told how to act, you're told how to play. Like, if you, if we complete over ninety percent, like we got a yep. like chance of winning the game. Yep. And I always felt trapped, eh? Yeah, it's so structured. It's such a structured industry. Um, you know, I think. Like you said just then, you know, you, you you're told how to be. Um, and when you when you get put in a box, um, you know, you know, you get a lot of anxiety. You kind of question who you are, what you are. And I think the last kind of um, two years, um, being retired from rugby league, uh, what I've learned is, you know, to love myself again. Um, I, you know, you, you we we put it, we put the game before everything else. We put it before ourselves. We put it before the our family. So when you do retire, you, you feel a little bit lost, but. You know, I'm so happy now. I've realised you know, what I, what my purpose is in life, where I want to go. I'm still finding that that journey. Um, you know, I'm starting off slow, and that's with Earls and other different things like with Sky Sports. But I'm so much happier now. Obviously, there's a lot of pressure off my shoulders. You know, not having to perform each week. Um, you know, 80 minutes, but I have to perform in different areas now. But you know, just people getting to know the real Lewis Brown, not just the Lewis Brown that played rugby league. And, yeah. and I think that's a big thing. Do you know? Um, do you know what you realise once you finish outside of football? That football's actually not that big, eh? Yeah, I, I, that's one thing I did <laughs> learn about my dad. Like, yeah. I went back to my dad when I went back to my dad's funeral. I was just like, man, like here I was two weeks ago in England, sitting in a hotel room, um, you know, sad, dropping two balls or not getting two passes off the deck properly, getting them, you know, to the halfbacks, you know, hands. And here I am two weeks later at my dad's funeral. You know, you kind of um, put things into perspective, and you know, that, that's something that really rang through my ears that. You know, it's not, you know, li- um, rugby league so minute in, in the scheme of life. And, um, yeah, it was, it was time for me to sort of start thinking outside of footy. And then in my last year at Manly, um, you know, I was playing a res- bit of reserve grade. And, you know, it was obviously a tough time, um, you, know, ha- you know, having played at such a high standard then to go down to Blacktown and, and, and play there. But I enjoyed it. And then I was just I just knew the politics and stuff behind rugby league. It just wasn't for me anymore. It was putting more stress on me, you know, rugby league was meant to be my get out. So when I would go home, I could I could think about my dad's stuff and help heal. But I was going home thinking about rugby league more and stressing out about that more. So I just knew, you know, things were adding time up. To go. Yeah, time to add. And I didn't want to move my life over to France and then deal with retirement over there. And and then I had an idea about Earls, and I didn't want to, um, you know, leave it too long before someone else could execute it. Yeah, yeah, that's sort of similar to me because I like they're like, oh, do you want to go back to England? And I was like, could have had like a two year contract there off the back of Manly, but I was like, oh, fuck, if I'm not joining the NRL and living in fucking Manly, like, yeah. how the fuck am I enjoy being yeah. back in England? And yeah. like, fuck that. And we obviously just made our very first t-shirts on the back yeah. of like his color and stuff, yeah. and just trying to flick them off to the boys. Yeah. And I was like, fuck, I'm just gonna do something else. So well, you bro, like I, I give credit to you guys. You know, you 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 did a lot. You know, you did the t-shirt stuff first and I was there at, mm. you know down at Narrow Bean when you're selling the tees and I think to see you guys do that and take the the move to sort of head that way to, to kind of get out of your comfort zone and do something other than rugby league because when you play sport you know you're so caught up in sport and you think you can't do anything else and then like you said like when when you are in sport and you start doing something else people are like what is he up to he doesn't do that he's mm. like he doesn't know what he's doing blah 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 and to see you guys do that and to, to grow the last three years is pretty cool and um, yeah it's just crazy how life works man like you know you invest so much time into rugby league and it's given me so, so much I love the game like I could never like you know speak, speak a bad word about it but it's, it's good to be free from it at the moment um, see the evolution of the game right now you see guys like Caelan Ponga they're sort of like allowed to be who they want to be right now it's pretty cool to see isn't it yeah I think it's really good I, I like to see what Caelan gets up to um, I like people once again getting outside their box um, you know when we played um, you know I remember when Twitter first came along and I said to, <laughs> I turned to Tatey Brent Tate and I said man I've got Twitter he's like oh, mate get off that bloody shit like yeah. what are you doing and then sure enough three weeks later he's got he's on and he's <laughs> twi- tweeting away sitting poolside yell yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah just stuff like that um, I, heard, I heard Joey and that talk about like rugby league numbers are going down it's just you can't sell like the dream of like oh it's enough to play for your side and, and play for pride and stuff you need to sell the whole package now eh? yeah, Kayla's Kay- yeah. like the perfect example of that like, yeah exactly you can, yeah. you can be into clothes you can be yep. into photography you can be into painting yeah uh, that's i think that's how you sell football well, now well if you look across american sports like a lot of a lot of boys are into that like you know russell westbrook you know he's into his clothing his fashion you know it's people branching off their own individual brands mm. and i uh, you know like i feel like with rugby league you know the next step would be to that'd be so cool to see people have to rock up to games in their own in their own gears and I, I know i've listened to a few of your podcasts and you've spoken about that you know it's just something that you know would add to the game um you know and i watch 
you know, with the NBA, I don't just turn it on when it's um, ready for tip off. I'm, I'm, I'm tuning we in. Say, we, I say that. Yeah. Okay, NBA is my favorite sport, yeah. but I'll never watch a game from start no, to finish. I'm, I'm, I'm tuning in half an hour before because yeah. I'm, want, I'm wanting to see what players are rocking up and and stuff like that because basically they're a walking billboard and they're basically, um, you know, you know. Before ahead of their time, they're, they're basically showing you what what's coming with with fashion. Mm, oh, fuck! I'd love for it to get to that point. Yeah. Um. So putting your first yours collection together, I remember you come over to Normie's house that time, picked up your oh fuck, remember those Pantone cards? But yeah. we can't find ours. We're looking for it yesterday. But um, sort of just show me your first designs. How yeah. much? Like you're three, four collections deep now, eh? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're coming at five. Five. Um, yeah. So um, five collections. Um, the deep. evolution of Earls has fucking changed a lot, hasn't it? Yeah. From a aesthetic yeah. standpoint. Yeah. I think I think you know yourself. You kind of look back and you think um, we were quite loud at the start yeah um, very yeah you know I, I kind of put, you know based it around off white here in Preston and they're quite loud um, brands you know very good branding um, but we've kind I of I thought that was a little bit um, weird for you because you've always been like Nice cuts, nice colours, like yeah. played down. Always had nice clothes and sort of let your shoes do the talking. Yeah, I, c- I kind of thought, you know, at that time, you know, that that was kind of at the time when, you know, you know sneakers, you could wear anything you wanted. Uh, it could be as bad as you want and you could chuck on a dope pair of sneakers and you were cool. But um, I, I kind of jumped into Earl's when things were changing. It was kind of, you know, kids were more, they just didn't want sneakers. They wanted A, B and C as well to look cool. Mm. And I was kind of looking at across, you know, the market in New Zealand and Australia and sort of what, what was in... Point of difference. Yeah, point yeah, of difference. Okay, and yeah. I guess being a new brand, you've got to find that point of difference and you've got to give a reason why to give a customer, you know, change. Because essentially if you've done basic stuff, it would just be, oh, you're kind of like YKTR. Right? Yeah, yeah, or yeah, like, yeah. you know, if you do, you know, simple cuts and that, um, you know, you kind of, you know, you get like AS colour or you, you get like basics, people start thinking that. And because you come from a rugby league background, a lot of people don't realise, don't understand... That outside of the eighty minutes each week, we do have other hobbies and mm. you know materials and cuts and stuff like that, and and learning pattern making and that has always been a an, um, a hobby of mine. So you know to to release a basic t shirt when I when I first started wouldn't probably go a long way. Um, so to to do something loud, um, you know, kind of worked for us. And then we've changed our branding and, and trying to we try to bring it back a lot. A lot. I like it now. Yeah, I like it. I yeah. like that new um, logo. You know that EC and it's kind of like in that court like shape. Yeah. Like a sick bro. Well, kind of uh, uh, basically an Earl um, in the olden days is a medieval kind of type. So I worked with a, um, a design studio called South Studio in New Zealand and. P- Try to try to base it around like a a family shield because mm. that's a, um, Earl's like a family crest, and then also kind of make it look like a basketball court as well. So they did some great branding, but to bring back the branding now and then chain like get us speaking with the silhouettes that we're trying to make, I think that's a good way. I think I know Jerry Lorenzo, for instance, he he's not big on branding, but he's big on his silhouettes. He realised that it can speak louder. He's about um, shape, eh? He's yeah, about shapes, shape, his yeah. shapes can speak louder than. than branding yeah because all this stuff is like oh it seems basic now but I like when you wear it fuck it feels like it sits nice eh? it feels nice yeah well even like feels the, expensive even the branding as, yeah <laughs> well even as a central range like you know I, I, I pulled out his first um his first range um from last year or two years ago when he first released it and you know even the the, the quality of that wasn't great and yeah. to see how far that's come it's, it's quite cool to see other like you know top of the line brands you know you see them them getting better and better because you know as a, as a brand yourself you think um, you know the quality is such a big thing and and to look back at my first range um, you know I probably still rock a few I still rock the shorts I still rock a few tees every now and then and you know, I've got a motto where I wouldn't release anything that I wouldn't wear so mm. I stick by that and you know without sounding arrogant or cocky um, you know I've got enough confidence in my own style to, to be able to live by that yeah do you feel like some of your style is a style that only you can pull off. Um, oh man, that's a tough question. Um, bro, you know what? I, I kind of just like just go with what I want to go with. Um, I think it comes down. Do you, to do you think it comes back to like because you're so confident in what you wear? Like when someone outside are looking at you and just go, oh fuck. Like, yeah, I think I'd be like, like Od- 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 Odell Beckham Jr. just wearing a fucking rubbish bag. Like, yeah. Oh fuck, that's cool now. Yeah, I think <laughs> I think like you know when you when if you if you're confident within yourself um, and and you're passionate about something, you you just don't really care. And and I've always not cared about what people thought I wore and and stuff like that. And if you, if you can wear it the way you want to wear it, um, I think that's a good thing, but it's just always been a passion of mine. I just, I've just loved to be different in in clothing and um, yeah, just, just do my own thing. And we're, you're in year and a half now into Earl's. Who do you seek passion off? Like who are you inspired by? What yeah, brands, what question, people? Bro. It's always changing, you know? eh? Um, yeah. I've always had my, like, you know, my base brands, you know, like John Elliott, um, you know, um, who else I like, um, Stamped, um, you know, Essentials, Fear of God, um, 
Jeez, you, you, you put me on the block. Yeah, I'm really starting to get super. Really, you're super LA inspired. Eh? Yeah, I like the LA, but I'm starting to get into the European brands like you know Acne, um, APC, um, Celador. There's there's some really really dope brands getting out there. Um, oh, I've got those Acne t-shirts, studio Um, the tees, like they're good feels. Eh? Yeah, really yeah. good feels. Yeah, like the you know the obviously the mock tee, um, the high collars, like a. You know, I've probably lost about 20 kilos, so about two years ago, ro- rocking that mock tee, I would have looked, <laughs> like do- looked like a dog collar around me, <laughs> but um, lost a bit of weight, so yeah, um, yeah I, I really like Acne, I like the way that they, um, their brand is, and, and you know, to be able to, a good sign of a brand is to be able to have a t-shirt that, like that mock tee that they've had around for about four or five years, and you know, the stuff sells out all the time, you know, it's hard to get your hands on it, and it's always been restocked, but um, you know, someone like John Elliott is someone that I really look up to, um, I like the way that his um, his branding is quite minimal, but he he kind of um, you know works well with his shapes and his styles and and the way that he kind of um, you know um, also you know dresses people. I think that's really cool and it, and it's got that LA vibe about it. Yeah, LA's a cool spot, isn't it? Yeah, it is cool, bro. What what sort of brands do you got? You know, what do you nah, like? Uh, we 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 used to be kind of LA New York inspired. Yep. Um, still like Kith, Kith's probably my yep. favorite brand, bro. Yeah, yeah. I, I like. I'll, I think just, you know, when you go into the Kiff store, there's an experience and you go out and get an ice yep. cream. But me and you both love ice cream. But yep. I don't know. I think just the experience of it and just because it's so basic and they've got a heavy um, collab yep. um, essence about them. Yep. But very, um, North, uh, sorry, South Korea. Yeah, it's probably my favorite. Place How was that trip moment. when you went up there? Cool, bro. Cool. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. mean? No, I haven't been. Go, no. bro. Right up your alley. Right. Yeah, up yeah, like yeah. nice food. Like nice and clean, bro. Like yep. fashion's cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just super, cu- super simple cuts. Like um, our crew necks and our hoodies are based off um, blocks from up there. So oh, cool. Yeah, I'll definitely be back up there straight away. Yeah. Um, starting to go heavy London, like love yep. represent, love, yep. um, do you know, Bucks and Cole? Yeah, yeah. Love yep. those types of like cuts. I think that lad sort of style really suits Sydney because we've got that Western Sydney element yep. about us as well. So yeah. yeah, I don't know, a bit of everywhere. Bro. So yeah, I you. got to, I was unfortunate enough to meet meet the represent boys, um, you know, um, Sammy Tonkins, um, who plays. Yeah, that was like, ages ago, eh? Yeah. yeah, I remember that. Yeah, so I got to meet, um, you know, George and, and yeah, good, good He's guys. He's only young, man. bro. Yeah, yeah. Young, hey? He's like twenty six. Yeah, now. only young. Yeah, and um, got to go out to his warehouse and stuff like that, and to see someone like him, um, you know, they like you know Thomas Lulawo, who I'm good friends with. You know, he knows him pretty well, and they just started off selling teachers at um, um, concerts and mm. you know local concerts within Manchester and stuff like that, and. It's just a cool story, you know. I think you know to be able to start like off like that and have that story where you to start selling t-shirts like you guys, and mm. then to see um, brands develop into worldwide brands is fuck. Is you come cool. out your first collection is like even though you look back at it now, like oh these things will change, but it's pretty like well put together, eh? Like yeah, well I kind of the breakdown of it. Like, yeah, the, I don't know any of that shit. Well, I kind of. I kind of I can't com- see you doing anything after. Nah, either. well, I kind of I kind of promised myself if I was ever going to do it to do it properly, so p- people would take me seriously. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so I spent a bit of money on the branding. I spent a money on um, you know the website. Um, you know, but to have a fourteen. Have piece, you changed your website? Yeah, it's we way cleaner now. Yeah. Like, we were just talking about that. Did you yeah. try to build your own one before? No, nah, no, nah, we got it built. We we try to go for something different though. Um, once you don't again, really need to. No, nah, eh? we, we we kind of had like a VCR font for our, our first logo. Yeah. Um, so it kind of intertwined with that different colors. Um, you know, the website um, was a lot different to other. It was quite hard to scan around. Oh, bro. Um, yeah, but yeah. we've kind of peeled it right back now, and you know, made it super minimal, um, just super clean. Um, we've worked with a company, Studio South, who have won heaps of awards in New Zealand, and you know they're super talented dudes. Um, shout out to Sam on that, who are over there looking after us. But yeah, just like to be able to drop, a f- I think it was twelve pieces. My first, my first collection. Um, you know, people were like, man, are you crazy? Like, mm. four, like twelve pieces. Like, you haven't even done any t-shirts yet. And I remember the night before I dropped, man, I was nervous. Oh, bro, I was like. You know when you're doing athletics as a kid and you yeah. do those little peas in your pants? Yeah. Like I was like that the whole night. I was just like shaking and mm. and then to you know you'd know yourself when you when you press the live button on Shopify. It's it's such I a know. good feeling, yeah. man. Like you know you kind of you know I had to turn my notifications off because I I don't like um, you know hearing good news. I yeah. like to figure it out myself. And yeah, it was cool. It was cool to get that that ball rolling and then to finally. Um, you know, see that happen, but then the next day I had to pick and pack the orders myself. <laughs> oh, an absolute nightmare. Oh, bro. Yeah. I think I've done the first 4,000 and something on my own, eh? Like yeah. On my own, bro. I was just like, bro, fuck this. There's got to be something else here. Oh, there's some, mate. <laughs> I've, done some pick, I've, I've done some picking and packing. It's just, but uh, you know, the cool thing about it is you got to. You have to do it, eh? I reckon. Yeah. Yeah. I, think, I think it makes you appreciate your brand more. Um, and like I said to you before, like, you know, we've, we've, uh, 
grew our systems naturally like you guys did and it feels better to do it that way you know mm. you've you, you've been you've worked from the bottom up to the top and you know, I always I always associate it like to skipping a preseason eh? like you can't skip a preseason and rock up round one thinking you're gonna kill it no nah, and then mm. and then if you don't pick and pack your orders man you put them straight into three PL and then you, your brand's over before it even starts you know yeah and costly isn't it yeah and you got to be willing to put in the hard yards spend those late nights um you know go learning process you know um, the growth. And you know, I've certainly customer returns. Yeah, like customer like returns. That, yeah. yeah. So you know, that first collection was exciting, but it was also a bit of a nightmare at the same time too, because you know, it's your first collection, and you get it out there, and you people don't really understand the sizing because mm. we were naturally oversized. Size, so, yeah. But um, we kind of hit that on the head. You know, the second collection, and it's got a lot better. But you know, picking and packing and and running it yourself. Um, you know, being all over the whole brand, it, it, it's nice. It's you know, you get to know your customer, and uh, you get to see that customer come back. You get to know names. You get to know what they like, what sizes they like. It's you know, these are strangers to you, but you you, you feel like you know them personally. I think yeah, that was it gets cool, like that. Eh? I think yeah. that was a cool thing at the start, for especially me, yeah. when you're like in Shopify and it says like, oh, this is like their fifth order or fourth order. And you're like, oh shit, we're, we're doing something right here. Yeah, yeah, and to see you know people like you said returning, um, you know, coming back and buying stuff was pretty cool. And then for our shorts, I think it was took us two weeks, close to three weeks to sell out that's awesome and yeah i think that was a cool thing and then you know we we got uh, we're fortunate enough to have a retailer reach out to us loaded store in new zealand um who you know stock you know nike alexander wang you know some of the like y3 carrots um you know they do yeezy so for them to reach out um and ask for us to come in it was it was a pretty cool feeling um and then for us to go in there and sell out was you know super real that was something that we were a shop with we, we used to yeah shop out. Oh, and, to, and to do that it was, it was pretty cool yeah um, so your oil shorts probably your most well known piece, core cool yep. product, core cool product of everything that you guys do. Yep. Um, wait, did that come off the back of those LeBron sh- Lakers shorts? Yeah, LeBron. Yeah, yeah, I, I kind of I got a look off off those ones, Just Don's ones. Yeah, um, but I kind of kind of fortunate that I d- I couldn't get all the trimmings that I needed. Um, I tell you what, I. I Got back the back the first samples. What was your first one? Were they the USA ones? Yeah, I got the first samples back, man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, anyone that doesn't know about sampling, it can be a fucking tedious experience. Because oh. like you, you design it and you see a picture and you get it, it's like what the fuck is that? Yeah. yeah. So um, applica- we have applique across the front, so mm. that's that um, you know um, embroidered kind of kind of look. Um, but they did screen printing, and. Uh, it had the R missing, so it was owls. And I was like, <laughs> uh, I was like, I could not even sell these. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, and the trimmings weren't even athletic trimming. You know yourself on a basketball short, the athletic trimming um, is quite a um, unique feel. Um, these were made out of cotton. Yeah. I rang my mum and I was like, Mum, I've told all these people I'm starting a brand and mm. we're about to launch in a few few months, a uh, few weeks, sorry. Um, I'm in a lot of trouble. And then the pressure was put on us to release because we were coming into Christmas. But I, I, I kind of thought to myself, man, like I'm I'm not going to release because for the sake of it, you, know, yeah. you only get one opportunity to release. And, and only one first product. impression. Yeah, and I had no right, boss. Yeah. I had no one tapping on my shoulder saying, hey, we need these shorts. Like mm. no one, no, and no one was waiting for us to release. No one had it in their calendar or their, their diary. So I pushed it back to February and, and we got it right the first time, yeah. Mm. Um, so from first collection to rolling into your fifth, what have you learned the most? What's What's been the biggest challenge? Um, whew, yeah, um, communication. Um, I think that's a massive thing um, between us and our production company. You know yourself, um, we work with, um, you know, China Textiles Traders and who you guys um, used um, over in China, Jeremy and that. And I think we were quite naive to think that, you know, a tex or, um, you know, giving them half half a brief would work. Um, you've got to be able to, you know, take control out of their hands and make sure, you know, you can, you know, um, communicate the best you can. China ops product. very differently, eh? Like, there's no, like... Um like an example of this is like if I've got a like a down pat blue and they'll bring in a fabric card and like there's one clear answer like yep. that's the blue they'll come yep. in and go because they don't want accountability back on themselves yep. that's just the way they've been raised yeah. and stuff and yeah and they can fuck some things up <laughs> uh, I did these socks one day and they were meant to be green and then come back um yellow and I was like yeah. Oh, yeah, over email, I was arguing with our lady for like an hour just over a color code, you know. So you got to you got to you know communicate. Um, you know, so well to them to get you know to get the final product because at the end of the day, it, you you've only got yourself to blame if you if you if you cut corners or you you don't want to put you know 100 percent into that that briefing document, then you know you're going to come back with disaster. And we've come back with few of them, but it's, we've got only part got of the day, yeah. yeah, it's all part of it, and it's it's all learning. Like it's I'm new to this. We don't there's no there's no book written on how to make a 
how to make a brand. We've all have our distance, different systems, our different models, and um, you know I've just been sort of freestyling. And we're at that size now, where um, we've certainly grown a bit, but um, you know we can go and do those vintage tees. We can um, recut shorts pretty quickly. Um, so you know you guys are obviously at a, at a higher level than us, and you a lot more mass. Um, you got a like broader market than us. So uh, I'm quite fortunate that I'm at that 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 stage now where um, you know I can just slowly tick along and, and slowly release. Um, some ranges but we try not to go seasonal I think. yeah I think I think you know? yeah we're, we're talking off here a little bit of like different types of business models compared to yeah. like ATR and Earls and like it just really suits you like your personality um, like it's cool when like not everyone can get it like yeah that, that style of um, yeah. clothing and demographic I think it really suits your guys brand yeah and I think that's kind of helped a lot with the shorts like the shorts have um, you know kind of got a bit of hype around them um, at the moment you know they're selling out there's a few coming along that look similar y- eh? yeah there's a few coming <laughs> we um, we we're, we're stopped making new colours and we're you know fortunate enough to be able to introduce the, the old colours that um, yeah, you know, people miss out coming back, eh? yeah, yeah cool. so they're, they're one of our biggest sellers um, oh so the scope fucking wears them like fucking three times a week eh? oh, we're, we're, actually, we're building him some punters merch pretty soon he's yeah. like pretty much booked around those clients. yeah he, um, I remember he, he come in and brought some it's pretty <laughs> good it's quite cool to see you know your mates supporting your brand and stuff like that you boys have come through and brought some stuff but you know just to see our growth over the last year and, and you know I think you know to, to score tries and, and, and to get success Success in rugby league is a cool thing, but you know, to, to you know yourself, but to see someone wear your clothing, you yeah. know, someone random, mm. um, it's quite cool. You know, I've been at the airport a few times and seen dudes wear it, and I'm just like, man, like, how did you get that? Like, you know what I mean? And then there was a, another moment. Do you like it when um, people are rocking it, but they don't know who you are? Ah, I love that. Yeah, so I, do I. Yeah, yeah. I, th- yeah. I think that's um, that, that's probably my favorite thing. I remember early on, I was like, I walked past this guy in a YKTR shirt, and I was like, waiting because usually people come up because we do vlogs and shit yeah, as well, yeah. so it's a very different model. I usually a lot of people come up to me and say like, fucking all this sort of shit. And he just walked, and I was like looking at him. I was waiting for him to come up. <laughs> he just walked straight past me. I was like, oh yeah. man, yeah, that's yeah, good. Yeah. I think that's the best. <laughs> I think it's the best thing um, when they don't know. Like one of the one of the the coolest things I've I've had is. Um, we are in Loaded in New Zealand and, and the Indian cricket team um, were, were touring over there and um, Virat Kohli, who's like a superstar, like you know, I think he's got like 40, 60 million followers on Instagram um, and he went out and brought our shorts and uh, I didn't even know and the next day we got all these followers like, mm. um, you know, from India and that and it was cool. It was just really cool to be able to, I guess, see another sportsman um, vibe with our stuff and go and buy it without getting no, it handed yeah, to them because yeah. these days, you know, as a sportsman, you you get given stuff, but uh, you know someone like him who earns multi million dollars um, and is a rock star to go out and buy our shorts was super dope. Yeah, yeah. People get that confused so fast because obviously we have got a football background very similar to you, and obviously got Chico Normie. They're like, oh, you just give all your free stuff to you know our players and it grows your brand. It's like we didn't give anything to anyone. We had like four or five at the start. Yeah, um, sort of like Jordi Kahu, Alex Glenn. Yeah, uh, but the reason why we supported them is because they supported us early on. So like, yep. oh, and they'll make content for us. Yeah, but I think we've only got one now. Like, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, everyone I, else buys ours. Stuff. Yeah, I try not to give it to too many rugby league players. Yeah, yeah. Um, we we'll probably. Oh, start. it's like feeding a chip to a seagull, and all the other seagulls come along, eh? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, it's like um, we've had some funny, funny things where people like rock up with um, DM saying, um, you know, we, we had like a we had a picture and it had like um, for, you know, it was like a flat lay of all our all our products. And someone come in, I won't name him, he's a rugby league player, and he's coming. He's like, um, he just wrote, um, how much? Oops. Like, um, I was like, oh, bro, like. How much is what? Like, yeah. or where do I go to buy this? But they just, you know. So you're someone. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. He was, uh, he was white. But, yeah. uh, but no, but like. Yeah, guffo. People, that's guffo. Yeah, people putting their hands out. No, I've been on the other side of the fence um, and, and been given stuff. Um, so, but it's cool. It's cool to see people come come through and buy stuff. And then one thing I did really like too was when that COVID period was going on, seeing the Panthers, what they did. Like, yeah, that was cool. I think eh? that was cool. Like mm. a lot of people are like, oh, it's silly. But I was like, man. Like, fucking shut the fuck yeah, up, man. Like, fucking them, haters. Let's let them like, you know, express themselves and. You know, like, you know, of course the Americans do it, but, like, you know, uh, American sport, it trickles down. Like, it's, mm. you know, like, uh, at the moment, like, the American sport have um, let marijuana into their their system. You know, they're not going to test it now. Mm. And, and I think that's one of the best things, you know. It'll happen here. Or so sport, you know, yeah. yeah. And, you know, and then it'll, it'll trickle down here. And then in five years' time, we'll be, you know, the, the sports will be like, we should have done this 10 years ago. You mm. know what I mean? You know, I'm starting to get into CBD oil and stuff like that. Is it good? Yeah, I think it really helps me. Um, you know, I've got no cartilage in either knees. Um, you know, I was sick of taking um, Celebrex and Voltarens. Oh, the old Ice and Easy on the knee. Yeah, yeah. People, yeah, would, yeah, people yeah, would know me around the old <laughs> Ice and Easy, the Earl's Ice and Easy. <laughs> yeah, you should get one going. Yeah, but um, yeah, I've, I'm, I'm really, really keen on the CBD. I've, I've done a bit of research on it, just seeing what it can help out with and, and stuff like that. But I'm a you know, massive advocate for it. 
Grayson Hart get you onto that? Yeah, I've been speaking to Grace. Yeah, he's just um, yeah, he's getting me onto it. But um, there's a few sources that um, have hooked me up for a few things. But it, it just certainly helps me, you know, the 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 way I take it and how I would deal with things naturally. I probably wouldn't deal with them, you know, with with as much stress while taking it. So I, I think it helps me out, especially as you know. Um, being in this clothing I think one of the biggest things I, I struggled with you know transitioning from rugby league to business is um, the negativity not not so much um, you know people being negative but you know when we play sport we wake up every morning to texts or phone calls each day saying hey good game hey can I get some tickets this weekend hey hey you played so great this weekend four tries you know you guys are going great you get those texts and phone calls from your friends and hey it's my uncle's 40th can you get me a signed jersey <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah I see those shorts you're wearing um, can I get a pair yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you know to go from that to, to business now it's like waking up to emails like returns um you know it's it's invoices, invoices due. Oh. Oh, you got 40k us due and i've only got 10k <laughs> on my bank account oh what's going to happen yeah. you know you've got to lo- learn to deal with that kind of stress and it you know it, it takes a toll on you you know and it's something that i've never had to deal with so you know cpt oil has uh, yeah. definitely helped me with that yeah <laughs> yeah, bro, I'll get it to you. Don't worry, bro. <laughs> Let me just fucking get this into me. Um, I was just thinking of it now, like, because when I go back to New Zealand and, like, I, f- I feel like Kiwi guys are a lot more up, like, will come up to you and say, like, all this sort of shit about your clothes and seeing your clothes and seeing lots of wheels when I go back for Christmas. It's kind of cool, way eh? Because when you think about it, like, we're into, like, lower, we're into, like, Huffa. We used to rock that shit and now we're kind of those brands now. Yeah, it's cool. I think... Um it's hard when you're in it, bro. You know when you're in it and you're picking and packing and like you see people wearing it, but you don't really understand. It's not too you sort of can take take a step back and sort of appreciate it for what it is. Yeah, I think I think a, a cool thing too is um, you know I, I've had a few of those brands reach out to me and and, and say you know congratulations on what you're doing, etc. Um, you know, there's a, you know there's a couple that are keen to do a collab and, and stuff like that, and I think um, you know to be able to create. Um, a brand to go up alongside them um, in New Zealand is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, like. And it's weird, like, I don't want to bag these brands though, but like, when, you, when I go into that, um, their stores and stuff now, and I'm just like, oh, it's, I don't have the same like experience about it. Like, yeah. I, I don't want I, I think I don't it also, bag anyone. Yeah, I like, think it also comes back to knowing the. Because you understand it, because you're starting you, to touch the fabric and you're like, oh, yeah, shit, you, what are you, they doing you, here? You kind of understand um, how much it costs to make, um, you know what it. What, what goes through the process, the materials, etc. Um, yeah, but, you know, they lead, you know, I Love Ugly, um, Lower, um, Huffer, um, you know, Stolen Girlfriends Club, they kind of led the way when I was around in Auckland. Especially um, I Love Ugly. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're, um, I reached out to V and they're, they're pretty keen to do a collab, which is... Yeah, that'd be big, cool. That'd be big for me in New Zealand. Yeah, like, that'd yeah. be awesome, yeah. So, you know, I think some of the coolest things I've done in the last year... Um, was was collab so um, you know I was fortunate. The new era, yeah. Eh? New so era, yeah. I got a new era, so I was fortunate enough to do a collab with them um, last year with some hats, and we just um, signed off on a new collab with them. So we we're about to do three new hats. So I designed them all myself. So how does that process work? Do they set you up and yeah, you have a meeting? Or yeah, what? Well, basically what happened was um, I've got some good mates down in Melbourne. Um, you know, the up there boys. Oh yeah, no, James, um, James and Brendan. And Brendan. Yeah. yeah, so I'm pretty close with them, um, and I just sort of asked them, um, you know, do you know anyone from New Era? Because I kind of Thought to my, thought to myself like if I want to do a hat I want to do it the right way and 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 why I was just like man I might as well you know reach out all they can do is say no and um, I, he put me in contact to Seb down there and um, yeah went down there for a meeting and, and things all went well and we released our first snapbacks last year um, and then we just um, signed off on a fitted hat so we're about to do the fitted hat I think that was a big fitted thing hats for, are cool bro. Yeah, yeah I think I, I think back, yeah like. I think fitted hats for me are, are a big thing that's where we I grew rock up and on. Room. yeah you remember how <laughs> yeah, hard yeah. new era hats used to be to get you know and um you know to have a seven and a half seven three eights to do that it becomes more you know personal yeah um, and it's sticker on the front exactly sick, yeah. and it's and it's one of those things that you can wear for three years because you you know it stays to your head so we did three of them and then they we also um are sampling at the moment um a streetwear range with them so the old school satin basketball um baseball jackets cool, um, cool. baseball jerseys and that and then um yeah we've got a another collab coming this year with g-shock um yeah. over in new zealand so um we've just, <laughs> just they brushed us they brushed us oh yeah oh like he said he goes oh look the same we're gonna go for the yep. new zealand guys as well he goes oh what's your demographic breakdown and we're like probably about 75 uh probably about 12 percent of our demographics yep. in new zealand and he goes yeah. oh we probably need a bigger demographic yeah I was like, oh sweet <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's, he's a good dude pat and that yeah. so we're, we're um pat and um is that so one of them there or is that one your own oh that's yeah that's just one of them it's one of the shapes that's coming out doesn't have a brand that's the best shape it. anyway isn't yeah it? yeah um, so um, yeah, oh. we've got <laughs> Luke, he's in there rocking his ill shit too. Yeah, 
He's got the what's the Bass Pro Shop hat on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but we've got the, that collab coming out, so I just signed off on all that. So it's quite funny though, because you think it's all New Zealand, but it has to be put through Japan to be able to cast out in Japan to be able to sign off on. Mm. And so it, it'll be pretty cool to be able to do that. So to be able to, um, I guess, align myself with um, you know two global brands um, that are known globally um, in my first year is, is pretty cool to, to, to do things. Um, someone comes up to you, hey Louie, I want to start a clothing brand. What's your advice? Uh, my advice would be um, make sure you got make, money. Make sure you got money. <laughs> make, oh well, make sure you're passionate about it because yeah. it's not fun if you're not. It's fuck, it's 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 hard. And, like it's stressful. There's two very different passions here. Like your product, you love products. Yep. Um, but I love like marketing and yep. sales and stuff yep. like that. So the passion's got to be somewhere within the business, and yep. like you can sort of cover the other spots like that as well. So. Yeah. And and I think also learning um you know to realize what you're not good at. And, and branching off and getting help um, mm. and don't be scared to ask silly questions like I've been in meetings before where I've just been too scared to ask questions because I've been like you know <laughs> because people think I'm I dress well doesn't mean I know everything about it you know bro I, I've, I've been headed by design students and like oh what like we where, you design like things in that yeah. comfort I was like oh like, none I don't know nothing yeah. I just like wing it like yeah and they're like you know the half look down in it because they've spent like yeah. three years in college and shit yeah I think we live in a day and age now where um look at Virgil look at here and like they're not they're well, not well the thing is with Virgil and here and and and, and people like Jerry and that you know you know people can have a degree but I think it comes down to the eye eventually and you kind of either born with that or you're not or you can you know you it's kind of like singing, eh? yeah, yeah, yeah. You kind of, you know, kind of have that point of difference, mm. and um, I think today's day and age, if you have that, you can get away with things, especially with social media, and like you know, anyone can make t-shirts and shorts, but so you got to kind of have that point of difference of, you know, you know, you got to have something different than that kid over in LA that has a has a family that can. Afford, you know, afford to get him t-shirts he's in his he's in his bedroom making all this dope shit but like you know you got to have a point of difference where he can't get to that level you know because anyone can do it and you, like you guys you've got a great marketing you've got a big following and um you know my following at the start you know we had no brand awareness but i got that platform from rugby league and mm. now it's slowly after a year we're slowly trickling down to different different aspects of, and different people so it's kind of cool what is earl's point of difference um I guess for it's us, you, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> nah. Uh, I think it um, is, eh? like, I think just the, it. just the, I think the story, um, you know, being different, um, trying to I guess you know give a quality product at a, an affordable price. And um, we we live in a we live in countries, New Zealand and Australia, where um, you know the, this hype beast stuff is a lot of money now. Like the resale market, um, kids don't just want sneakers now. Like I said, they want hats. They want dope fit they want like you know hoods they want like cross do you reckon that's starting to come down here like i know it's kind of here right now but do you think there's a position for obviously like brands like me and you to sort of like create that hype product and hype thing do you reckon that's coming yeah i think it's slowly getting there um we've slowly tried to start to do it with our shorts um Mm. build the hype up we don't try and restock them straight away um once a once a colorways um kind of phased out we just leave it and then we bring it back um you know pre-sales help with that also trying to elevate your your brand and elevate your product um so to to be able to you know to get you know like the vintage for instance we we did 50 vintage tees and you know we had i think 1500 people waiting on our website on a on a on a friday morning Mm. to be able to see that is pretty cool and to be able to sell out in three minutes Mm. that's something that you know i've i've been a part of you know trying to get shoes in that and and lining up for shoes so so to be able to create something to see that to happen to your own brand is 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 something that you know i'll I'll always live with yeah we've had some pretty cool moments eh, when i think about it like yeah it's hard just not to like when you're so used to it as well just not to get comfortable with it as well but i think our brand moving forward like there's going to be a big core element to it but we are going to drop some very like hype like you get one chance and that's it. Yep. And we've already done it in the past and it still seems to sell out, but it's building structure behind it and yep. fucking actually mapping out for it. Yeah. And what about you boys? You, you, you like the way you guys are headed? And yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like, fuck, when you start, like, one of the, like, when I see people like opening YKTR shirts and crying, like, that's pretty important. Yeah. Um, when I see people, um, like, first baby photos and then yep. rocking YKTR shirts, that's important. Um, when someone's had a kid and, and their first photo with their kid, and they got YKTR, and they send it to me, and it's like, oh, I made, made sure I had to wear a YKTR shirt. That was important. Like that stuff matters to me. Yeah. Um, I kind of want to build a brand. It's like when they look back on it, twenty years, they're like, oh, like what was that shirt? Yeah. And hopefully, we're still around. I don't know if there's a life cycle on it. Yeah. But, um, yeah, clothing, like we talked about off air, clothing's just one part of us, and we yeah. want to try do different things. But it will always be the core essence of how we built. Yeah. Everything that we built. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. I mm. think. I think for me, it's. I think for me. Um, 
it's longevity in the game. Yeah, 100, um, 100. I don't I don't think you're a proven brand unless you've been like you know ten years around, and mm. and that that goes back to those brands in New Zealand, you know, Huffer and and Lower and I Love Ugly. Um, you know, they've been around forever. You know, they've they've paved the way for brands like me and you, um, Earls and YKTR to do things. Um, you know, Zane Robe, another one here in Australia. Um, you know, I I, I think. After this whole COVID thing, I'm trying to buy more locally. Mm. Um, you know, um, is there any? Have you seen any other um, dope Aussie brands that you, you, um, you can talk about? So G Dub, like I took those G Dub boys quite a yep. bit, and they've credited to us. Like they they were about to quit. And so when did, how, what's their what's their background? They're like ten to come. They're ten years been oh, in really? the game. Yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. seeing their is it a store? Empower, up yeah. Empower? yeah, yeah. Shit, babe, what's up, chicken? Oh, Spanish mackerels in, <laughs> in the house. Um, the but Papua, yeah, the Papua New Guinean prince. <laughs> but yeah, they're sort of around for. They were sort of around for like seven years and yep. then like just weren't like oh, – they show me all their numbers and stuff now. Yep. So um, they've sort of built there for marketing and business philosophies of what we've done as well, which yeah. has been pretty cool to see. So um, they're, they're doing pretty cool. I think that sort of – I think of you guys um, – you think of anyone? Sure. Yeah. I'm Obviously, I know Zainrab and PE yeah. Nation, and there's a lot of fashion brands around here. But yeah, I don't it's a different feel to it. Yeah, I think I think the cool thing too is like, um, you know, you you know, a lot a lot of brands don't really hit their hot, like their peak until you know three years, four years mm. um, into it. So mm. I think that's the exciting thing for us. Um, and also you, you'd know like these big global brands, you know, they have so much, so many employees, and and so many. Uh, peop, you know, a big team to be able to do that product and to be able to kind of match it, but like you know, with one or two, three, four but people, yeah, you know, you, you kind of yeah, yeah, you kind of think you know, if you can get those resources yourself, what, you know, what are you capable of? You know, so I think that's a cool thing for us too, uh, heading forward. Last question: What's the future for Eels? Um, like I said before, bro, just trying to um, you know be- become a well-established brand. Um, but tastefully, eh? Is that is y- that is y- that the trick? Yeah, yeah, I think I think tastefully. Um, I guess also you know just just becoming a brand that you know people like the cut and the feel. Um, not necessarily everyone has to like us, but you know just you know I, I guess just be able to give a, a, a customer a, a good experience and you know keep our, our customers happy, loyalty. Um, and then just stay in the game. Um, we it's it's a tough game. You've you've been you've been doing it for three years. You know how hard it is. It isn't easy. It's super stressful. Um, and, but it's so fun at, at the same time. And when when you when you when you're passionate about something, you'll make it work. And um, you know, for me, it's 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 not a it's what it's the old classic. It's not a hundred meters. It's a marathon. And you know, if, if I can sit here in five years' time and say I'm still doing earls, I'd be very happy. Yeah. What do you reckon fashion's going in the next within Australia in the next five years? Oh, or man, down? like. I think I think of technology and fashion, and I've seen something on here in Preston's um, page, uh, maybe it would have been maybe six months ago, and it, it was like a printer. So basically, all you would do is you download, you'd download like a USB, and it's like a laser printer, uh, and it spits out the T-shirt. So you buy the the USB stick and you'd plug it in mm. um, at a shop, and that's how it would spit out the T-shirt. So you, you can do it like that. So if you, if the ideas of that happening, it, that would just turn flip stuff on its head, you know, and and you know brands bigger brands you know what's going to happen to them but i don't know man hopefully you know new zealand and australia a little bit behind um we've had they have their own fashion but they're slowly trickling down a lot of that hype stuff slowly getting here now so mm. um you know five years time we might just be right in the right spot huh yeah <laughs> we might get it off white down here eventually and <laughs> all right right thank you for your time thanks for your knowledge um really appreciate you coming in and it's good to catch up no thanks bro appreciate it my guy sweet bro